Hi, it's Barbara. This is my channel, Healthy Self, Heal Thyself. I'm glad you're with me today. Last week, I made a little bit of a mistake. But while, before I get to that, I would love for you to click like and subscribe. This is going to be part two of Eat to Live. And we can only do one chapter this week. It is chock full of information. So last week I told you how to do your BMI. Well, I told you the wrong way. I made an error. It is your weight. For, my, for me, it would be 122 times 703. That's the number, 703. Once you have that number, divide it by your height in inches. I'm 5'1", that's 61 inches squared. So 61 times 61, that number divided into the other number. You should come out with something normal. I don't know what you came out with, what I, the information I gave you last week. My bad. So, as I was saying, this week we're going to be with Eat to Live, Chapter 5. I thought we could do Chapter 5 through 8 this week, but there's so much information that he gives us and it's pertinent to changing your mind without the information, without the knowledge. We won't change. We'll just keep on doing what we're doing and wondering what's wrong. I kept eating what I call the healthy diet and couldn't understand why I couldn't lose any weight. Oh, I'd lose three or five pounds, but then I'd gain them back, and I'd lose three to five pounds again, and I'd gain, regain them and a couple of more. I just could not figure it out because I really was trying very hard to eat healthy, and lose weight. I just thought maybe you can't do it. But that's enough of that. I went through it uh, in the first video. You can watch that one. So in chapter 5 this week, Dr. Furman shows many examples of before and after uh, pictures. I've, I've asked on um, Facebook, the groups I belong to, if anyone would like to give me before and after pictures so I can post them on my videos also. But he has plenty of them. Even if you don't buy the book and you see it in the bookstore, look at all the different pictures. Oh my goodness. People who are very obese changed up and started eating according to his plan and lost hundreds of pounds. So it's always good to see those before and after pictures. And I'm going to try to display mine right about now. So protein, fats, and carbs are called macronutrients, M-A-C, macronutrients. But vitamins and minerals are called micronutrients. And all plant foods are a combination or a mixture of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So high protein diets are not good for us, but protein rich diets are good because all the vegetables that we should be eating are, are protein rich. Uh, even a banana has three point, is 3.5 percent protein and that's so close to uh, mother's milk. Imagine that. Mother's milk is 3.5% protein. So is a banana. That's awesome to know. Dr. Furman is not overly concerned about macronutrient balance because if we eat healthy foods, we automatically get the macros. But we have to stay away from white flour, sugar, oil. In fact, I remember the old saying, the whiter your bread, the sooner you're dead. So I've been staying away from white bread for a long time. If we stay away from unrefined carbs, they will supply fiber and nutrients. So carbohydrates, natural carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates provide fiber and nutrients. And they're low in calories. We thought carbohydrates were fattening. No, complex carbohydrates are low in calories. Fresh fruit, beans, legumes, whole grains, and root veggies are all carbohydrates. The refined carbs are the empty calories. And he says in chapter 5, to lose weight, eat plenty of green vegetables. They're low in calories, rich in nutrients, and fiber. He 
has come up with the term nutritarian and he suggests that everyone become nutritarians where you eat nutrient dense foods and he even made a chart and um, it starts with green leafy vegetables I'll talk about that in another moment he recommends eating one pound of raw veggies and one pound of cooked or steamed veggies every day that sounds nearly impossible coming from where we've all been right but it is possible you make a huge salad every day I mean you can put all kinds of things in your salad not just lettuce and tomatoes that's old school right now you can buy a bag of a spring greens all different greens um, and chop them up into a salad add carrots and tomatoes and cucumbers and chickpeas and all kinds of things to make one pound of fresh raw veggies once you start eating lots of veggies not only will you lose weight but there are added benefits and they are you become disease you begin to prevent diseases and you begin to heal anything you might have for instance um, when I started I had high cholesterol I didn't even know it I had high cholesterol so I got tested once I became once I became a eater of a plant-based diet I had my cholesterol checked and it was high so um, I spoke with the doctor and we su she suggested and we decided to come back in six weeks and see what it looked like and see if with anything I, if I start needed to start taking any kind of medication well I knew I wasn't gonna start taking any medication because I knew the secret and I just kept right on eating the way it suggests in eat to live for six more weeks and when I went back my cholesterol had dropped dramatically so I knew I was on the right path so right now I'm sure it has dropped even more because that was about seven or eight months ago uh, so the more veggies you eat the more weight you will lose you start eating those veggies your weight will start dropping and then he begins to teach us about nutrient dense food the dark green leafy veggies like kale mustard greens swiss chard spinach those are the highest on his chart they rank a 100 for nutrient density those leafy green veggies and then the next category below that uh, were other green veggies like cabbage and broccoli and uh, green peas and string beans those kind of vegetables the third third place winners are um, the non green veggies for instance beets eggplants mushrooms onions radishes sprouts bell peppers not the green ones they're the ones that are unripe I didn't know that I grew up eating green peppers they're not ripe they're supposed to be red or yellow or even orange those are the ripe peppers tomatoes and cauliflower the next in line they ranked 45 they have a ranking of 45 points um, fresh fruits all berries he really suggests we eat berries every day get them in some kind of way blueberries and raspberries blackberries strawberries and during the summer months it's so easy to find them and then during the winter you can buy frozen ones uh, and melons and apples and bananas next in rank are beans lentils chickpeas black beans kidney beans there's such an assortment of beans you can have different type of beans every single day you can put beans in your salad like a condiment we never thought of that before after that are the raw nuts and seeds sunflower seeds pumpkin seeds sesame seeds flax seeds almonds or almonds and cashews after that the colorful starchy veggies like the butternut squash spaghetti squash sweet potatoes corn those vegetables below them whole grains and white potatoes so he doesn't want us to eat a bunch of whole grains 
in moderation we can have them absolutely and potatoes and then go straight up the list the higher the number the green leafy veggies the faster we'll lose weight and the healthier we become then he had a dictionary on fats <laughs> I didn't even know it was more than two or three kinds of fats the first one is hard to pronounce Arachnidonic, arachnidonic acid. This is found in meat, fowl, dairy, and eggs. And it may increase high blood pressure, thrombosis, and allergies. It's also linked to arthritis and depression. We can get depressed from the foods we're eating. We never knew this before. Uh, cholesterol is a fat. And we, our bodies make cholesterol but also it's found in meat, fowl, dairy, and eggs. If you having problems with cholesterol, the way to lower it is to stay away from animal products because that's what they are. This DHA, this is uh, omega-3 found in fish like salmon and sardines. And we can also get omega-3s in flaxseed, walnuts, soy. So when people say, you don't eat fish? What are you going to do about your omega-3? You get it from flax seeds and walnuts, those kind of things. Hydrogenated oils like margarine or hydrogenated oils, uh, they extend the shelf life of oils. So things made with hydrogenated oils like crackers, chips, these things can stay on the shelf in a grocery store for months. And also, it allows... Uh, fast food restaurants to use the oil over and over when frying those French fries and whatever things they fry. So that's hydrogenated oils. Then there's monosaturated like avocados, almonds, peanuts, nuts. Highest amount though is found in olive oil, canola oil, and peanut oil. Polyunsaturated fat, corn oil, soybean, and sunflower. These promote the growth of cancer in lab animals. They've been tested and it promotes cancer, uh, even more so than olive oil. So olive oil is not exempt either. It's just empty calories. It's uh, fat. Now, saturated fats, these are the significant cause of heart disease or cancer. And the saturated fats are found in meat, fowl. And by fowl, of course, we mean chicken and duck, whatever. Uh, eggs and dairy. Butter, cream, and cheese have the most saturated fat. I used to use butter instead of margarine, thinking that was healthier. Saturated fat. Coconut oil. Of course, coconut oil is healthy. Well, no. I use it on my skin rather than putting it in. And also um, palm oil. Those are the saturated fats. Now, the unsaturated fats, these fats are lower in cholesterol, but in using, in excess, using in excess may cause, cause or promote cancer. Uh, trans fats. Trans fats don't even exist in nature at all. And they're cancer promoting and they raise cholesterol levels. And when you're reading labels on different products, it may say zero trans fats, but that's because they can use up to 0 0.5 trans fat grams per serving. So if you eat a whole bag of chips and it says no trans fat, you're probably getting trans fats. And they are definitely causes of um, cholesterol, high cholesterol, and cancer. All right, fish is one of the most polluted foods we can eat. A lot of fish, high in mercury. I used to eat a lot of tuna years ago. I stopped eating it. But then I switched over to salmon because I thought that was healthy. In fact, the f mercury that... Um, they tested pregnant women and how much fish they ate, and uh, it, they found that the f mercury in the fish that they ate while being pregnant was linked to birth defects, seizures, developmental disabilities, and even cerebral palsy. So there's some things, I don't know about you, but I feel like 
I want the truth. Why are they not? Why is the food industry not telling us the truth? Because they will start losing money. Well, my health is more means more to me than their profits. So do the research. Help me change your mind. That's my goal to change your mind. I am a mind changer. All right. My people perish for lack of knowledge. It's time for us to know what we're eating and what it does to our bodies and what it can do for us. All right. Until next time, I hope you'll stay with me every week. Don't for forget, click like and subscribe and even hit that bell so that you'll be notified when I post another video. Until next time, healthy self, heal thyself, and you be blessed.